Okay, so I'm going to explain the um, the uh, the changes in tubular fluid to plasma concentration ratios for the different substances along the uh, the proximal convoluted tubule. So this is this is very 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 easy. I'm gonna do it really quickly because I don't have a lot of time. But you know, I, you know, I thought I'd rather go ahead and do it really quickly rather than not even doing it. So okay, so the first thing that we need to understand is this this graph is going to be the tubular fluid to plasma concentration so it's a ratio of 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 the uh, substances that are inside of the tubule right here to the uh, to the plasma concentration okay so we're going to go ahead and, and 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 do that that equation here that the term really tubular fluid to plasma concentration all right so what's going to happen if we if we um if we increase plasma concentration if we increase plasma concentration then this whole ratio is going to go down okay so this is uh this is uh, inversely proportional here so if we increase plasma concentration this whole ratio is going to go down if we if we um okay so let's let's get rid of this now if we increase obviously the tubular fluid concentration if we increase tubular fluid concentration, the whole ratio is going to go up. If we um, if we now decrease plasma concentration, the whole ratio is going to go up, right? Because it is inversely proportional. So we're gonna we're gonna so, so with that in mind, with that in mind, I don't know if this is a good way of explaining it, but you know it, it it's it's pretty it's 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 pretty basic it's pretty self-explanatory so with that in mind we're going to go ahead and understand this graph here uh <clears throat> the first thing that i want to that i want to that i want to um, show here is that is that um is that this is describing the change in tubule to plasma concentration of the substances along the proximal to the, the proximal tubule okay and we know that in the proximal convoluted tubule, 67% of the water, meaning most of the water, is actually reabsorbed, okay? So we can automatically assume that the water is going to be coming out of the proximal convoluted tubule. It's just going to be, so this, 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 this arrow just means that water is going to be coming out of the tubule. That's what I'm trying to to um to to um to the pick here okay so water is going to be coming out of the tubule from the moment everything gets filtered all the way to the end of the proximal convoluted tubule and this amount of water is going to equate to about 67 percent of the water all right so once something right so i'm gonna say that this is my uh my um my a um afferent artery right it's gonna go into bowman's uh, capsule and it's gonna go into the efferent artery so this is afferent this is efferent this is the the uh, the glomerulus basically right so this here is i guess bowman's space right <clears throat> so things so most of these substances are all gonna end up in the bowman's space okay so everything is gonna be freely filtered okay when everything is freely filtered everything is freely filtered is like it's like basically uh there is very little barrier to the filtration so anything that's going to be coming in the afferent artery is going to eventually end up here in the bowman's space all right so if everything that's in the afferent artery has the same concentration that as everything that ended up in the uh in the bowman's space that means that the tubular fluid to plasma concentration, so if everything got freely filtered, that means that everything that ended up inside of Bowman's capsule has the same concentration as everything that was coming in the afferent artery. So, you know, so the tubular fluid has the same concentration as the plasma, therefore this ratio is one. And that is the ratio when we start in this graph. So everything gets freely filtered, right? <laughs> From this point onwards, what's going to happen is that if something is not reabsorbed, like inulin, it's going to get concentrated along the proximal convoluted tubule. Why? Because water is coming out 
along the proximal convoluted tubule. So even though it got freely filtered and it is neither absorbed nor excreted, not, not secreted, okay? It got freely filtered right here and it is not secreted and not reabsorbed. It is gonna get concentrated along the proximal convoluted tubule because water is coming out of the proximal convoluted tubule, leaving the stuff, you know, leaving the stuff that's in there. Uh, therefore, it gets concentrated because water is gonna be coming out. So it's basically drying it out, okay? Now, what happens? There is some other substances like bicarb, like amino acids, like glucose, right? That they get freely filtered, just as we discussed. However, even though water is coming out, they're being reabsorbed, okay? Reabsorbed faster than water, it's, that water comes out, okay? So, so let's talk about, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about uh, bicarb per se, okay? Tubular, uh, tubular fluid to plasma concentration. This is really weird. I'm writing through the camera. Okay, it's gonna be one uh, right here as you get filtered, right? But then, uh, so we're talking about bicarb, right? But water starts coming out, right? Water starts coming out along the proximal convoluted tubule. I'm gonna look at my paper. Okay, so water starts coming out along the proximal convoluted tubule, right? And it's gonna try to concentrate whatever is left in there, so H2O. Right, so we say that bicarb is in here. I'm gonna try to concentrate it, but what happens? What happens is that bicarb is gonna be reabsorbed, is, it gets reabsorbed in the proximal convoluted tubule and it gets reabsorbed faster than water or to a greater extent that water gets reabsorbed, right? So we end up at the end of the proximal convoluted tubule, we end up with a tubular fluid to plasma concentration that is gonna be what? Uh, so the tubular fluid concentration uh, became higher. Why did it become higher than the plasma concentration? It became higher because, because, um, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So forget about that. The tubular fluid to plasma concentration of, of, of this substance because because it came out of the tubular fluid faster than water came out, then the plasma concentration is gonna go up. The tubular con the plasma concentration is gonna go up because bicarb is coming out of the tubular fluid into plasma. Okay, so the plasma concentration is gonna go up. At the same time, tubular fluid concentration is gonna go it, of bicarb is gonna come down because bicarb is, flow, is, is getting out of the tubular fluid, okay? Even though water is coming out, bicarb is coming out faster, okay? So, so, uh, so tubular fluid concentration is gonna come out, is gonna, is gonna come down faster. And when you <clears throat> look at this ratio, okay? Um, uh, this, this, uh, this uh, denominator is a, is a, is a large number. And this denominator is a small number, therefore this is gonna be much lower than one. Okay? And that is what we see here at the end of the of the um of the um at the end of the proximal convoluted tubule, uh bicarb and glucose and other substances are much much less than one. Okay, so that is really how you understand this graph. That is really how you understand.